Recently, Google Chrome decided to encourage internet security by putting up a warning sign in everyone's browser whenever they go to a site that is not HTTPS secured. If you run a server in Golang that hosts multiple domains and you want to make that work so that they are all HTTPS secured, here is how to do that. My name is Matt Studley from storyfeed.com and you are watching a video about programming. So today we're trying to build a HTTPS handler and a HTTP handler that redirects to the HTTPS handler and we want the HTTPS handler to be able to deal with multiple certificates. Okay, now I'm going to start with, um, I've just got one file I've created, main.go and in here we have a list of certificates that we will be using. It's, it's only got too long but in theory that could be as, as long as you reasonably want. And that, these are the locations of the certificates. Um, I've been using Let's Encrypt to get my certificates because they provide them for free. This is a new thing, right? It's only been relatively recent that Let's Encrypt has been so available. And this is probably why Chrome is now saying, well, you've got free certificates, everybody. Why aren't you using them? Um, so we've got this list of certificates. And in there, I've got a fullchain.pem and a privkey.pem in each of these two folders. So first thing we need is a tls.config. Um, and we'll call it tls, we'll call it tconf. And we need a pointer to it because we are going to be referring to some stuff in its internal slice and we're going to be appending to its internal slice. So we want to make sure we keep resetting the same object. So for i colon e no for k underscore comma v we don't need to know its number. Okay. Colon equals range on cert locks. We need to build a certificate for each one of these. So if we go to TLS dot load key pair I think it is load something key pair let's let's see what our options are well let's let's save this and get the import properly so so now it's imported I can use the so now that the file is imported I can use the TLS um, and use the autocomplete to find the right thing no it's load load key pair and then we just give the two certificate files um, so path dot join and I'm going to join V which is a string with full chain dot pem I think it's the full chain first and then path dot join V with priv key dot pem close that bracket so that builds a certificate. Actually, it can throw a wobbly here. So let's do that. Cert, comma, comma, error, col oop, error, colon equals that. And then we are going to append that to the tconf certificates. So tconf dot certificates equals append tconf dot certificates with our new certificate um, and if there was an error if error does not equal nil then we will throw an exception no we just log fatal right log dot fatal error um, I'm just going to use log fatal, handle them as you feel appropriate, but this at least lets me find out where the problems are in this for now. Um, so, so far we've just loaded up all of these keys. So we've got these two keys, but we haven't actually, the certificates are set, but we need to kind of build them together. And that's a thing that the server, the uh, T configuration class can do. So tconf.build name to certificate. 
Um, and once we have them built to a certificate, we can stick that in a server. Now, I'm sure a bunch of you guys are familiar with the http.listen and serve function. Now, this function normally takes an address. I'm going to go with 8080 because it's a fairly standard one. Obviously, if you were doing this for your main thing, that would be 80. But I already have stuff on my main server, which is using these domains. So I'm not going to work on those ports this time. So with that in mind, I'm not going to, I'm going to use the 8080 for the back and we we'll use 8181 for the secure side. And this can take any server, any muxer, or any handler. That's that is anything that receive that anything that has a serve HTTP method, and and therefore implements the HTTP dot handler interface. Um, if you don't give it one, then it will just use the default one. We are going to give it one in a second. So we know what listen and serve does. What it does is it actually creates a server object and then it calls the listen and serve method on that server object, having assigned it an address and a default muxer or the muxer, the handler that you have chosen. Um, but for doing and to do the um, Ooh. I actually think this may not work well because this this will need to be evaluated before the function can go so I do think we need to stick this in another func um, and this func doesn't need any parameters but it does need to be called so That is our insecure server, which we need to do, and we need to make that point to the secure server, which we're going to host on 8081. Now, we cannot just go http.listen and serve tls, which we normally would do if we just have one domain, because we would then need to give the 8181 thing and then we need to give our two addresses of our keys, you know, key one, address, key two. But we need more addresses, so we can't do this. And there's the handler. So we can't use this directly. So what instead we're going to do is we're going to create a server. Um, S serve, that's a secure server, colon equals um, HTTP dot server, wiggle dash. And inside here, we need to give it an address. So ADDR is 8181. And with that, we need to give it a handler. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave that nil, but I will put that on in a second. And the last thing we need to give it is its um, TLS config, right? TLS config, which is our TCOMP. Don't think we need to give it anything else to make it work. So then we call s serve dot listen and serve tls. Now this doesn't take keys because it's using the tls configuration file we've already got. So, but we well it it can take the keys, but because we don't want it to use these different keys, we're going to use the keys that come in the TLS configuration we've supplied, so we send them as blank strings. Serve so that, we should log that as fatal as well. Log.fatal, just so if something goes wrong, we can see why it's gone wrong. It's a vaguely helpful thing to have, isn't it? So if I understand this all we've done correctly, we have made our configuration, we've run through our list of certificates, and for each of them we have created the certificate, and then built the certificate, append to, we build them, and then we just start our service. The only problem is of course we don't have anything going on in these handlers, and we need something going on in these handlers if this is going to work. So I'm going to open a new page, 
tab edit handler.go handlers.go and in here we've got to create two handlers so first one we will call i handler that's the insecure handler and that doesn't actually contain anything and we have another type which is a secure handler and both of these need methods so func i h i handler um, serve http again this is the uh, t um, http dot handler interface so to fill this interface properly we need uh, to receive w which is a http dot response writer again an interface that we receive and the last the other thing we receive is a request which is a pointer to a http dot request and in this function this is our insecure handler so we want to point them to the secure page so well, let's pull up the host so host dom that's the domain of the host colon equals r dot host and we're going to split that strings dot split r dot host and we're going to split that on a colon and everything to the left of the first colon and if there is no colon that will just be the element zero so we're guaranteed to get an, an array with at least one element so we can call on that and that's our host dom and then we just redirect so http dot redirect http and then it takes w and it takes a writer and a request and then it takes the new directed place so we'll send it to https colon backslash backslash plus r dot host pl no it's not r dot host plus host dom plus um yeah let's let's give it the path as well right just in case the the path we want the path to be passed on to so plus r dot url dot path plus oh no plus quote colon 8181 which is the place we're redirecting it to and now we put in r dot url dot path oh and this needs a number as well uh, this is a redirect number the non-permanent just go there um, is 302 I think so if we use 302 that should create the redirect and if you wanted to make it a permanent redirect which I think a lot of people do I can't remember the number for that but you can look it up the the reason I'm not making it permanent is because I only wanted to go there this time because I had a problem where I had a certificate so I had a permanent redirect to the site and this was before I knew about this um, let's encrypt thing where it was free or maybe it just didn't exist at that point so I had to pay £50 for that certificate and I couldn't afford to renew it that, that occasion I couldn't, I couldn't justify renewing it but I wanted to keep the site up or at least something pointing to it but my my browsers, all the browsers on my computer wouldn't go to the new site because they kept the permanent redirect and kept going to the other domain, um, the other port, which was kind of frustrating. So I'm not using the permanent for that reason, but that should cover our needs here. And the S handler, a secure handler, also needs a serve HTTP method. Which also takes a HTTP dot response writer and a request, and this uh, I'm not going to do anything particularly fancy, but this would be your main handler for this. So. You can make it say whatever you want. I'm just going to make it say, I hope you you feel secure now you are here. 
Um, I don't think I need to do anything more. So, the last thing to do is to attach the uh, appropriate handle to the right place. This is the insecure handler, so let's use an I hand handler and just create a new one. And here for our handler, we'll use an S handler. Like so. If this works, when I go over to here, I should be able to build this. Go build. Oh, there's a problem. Handlers, undefined I hander. That's just a typo. Handlers 12. There it is. Handler. All right, go build. 13, 13, undefined strings. Oh, that's because it's not imported it because splite is not a method. There you go, it's imported splits, string. And so that's built. Perfect, now if I try and run this, uh, dash mhttps, it's gonna say open, let's encrypt. It couldn't open the key, that's because we're working on my local computer. So I need to upload this to my server before I can do anything. So SCP, secure copy it to, so MHTTPS. And we need to copy that to my server. And I think that's right. So we just have to wait a second while this file uploads to my server. Okay, that's done, it took about a minute, so now I log in. And if I run this program, see if we get any problems. So now we need to go to one of those two domains that I, I've listed and, and play around with those two ports. So the port numbers are 8080 and 8181. And the domain we're going to go with that we have played is enchantedconvoy.com, but it's got to have the dub dub dub, I think so. Right, let's go to dub 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 dot enchanted convoy.com colon 8080 and see what happens shall we let's go here oh so that worked it was 8080 it's now been redirected to 8181 and we are getting the message that we should have got from the secure and just to prove that it's secure you can look at this little doofer thing here that says look we have a padlock doesn't that make us all super happy um, and I think that's basically everything we need to do. If we try again with a slightly longer path, so we go back to www.enchantedconvoy.com for, um, for colon 8080 forward slash go to, um, which is obviously ignored by the handler anyway. But if we hit run, if we click enter, we now find ourselves at https enchantedconvoy.com 8181 forward slash go to and we get the I hope you feel secure now message. So that could have responded appropriately and kept the path. It doesn't actually pass on the, um, the question mark data but that's still progress I would say. Um, so that is what you can do when you want to push people when they come to your site to go to the correct secure side of your site and get that little logo up and keep Chrome happy and Chrome users happy forever. So let's just run through all the things that we've done so you can see and have it all in one place. Here. So first we created a configuration item and a pointer to a tls.config, made it empty and then we created the certificate pairs using tls.loadx509 key pair, giving it the path of the two files. If there was an error, we logged, obviously. Um, and then we basically just built that list for, through the loop, appending each new certificate to that list of certificates. Once we'd built 
put them all in the list. We ran the build name to certificate, which does a ton of fancy work, I have no idea. But it basically puts them all into a single certi usable certificate thing. And then this is our normal server. This is the, the insecure server, which will point. So we sent it an I handler to point to the, the secure server. And we needed to make a secure server as well, so we've made a new secure server. But to do that, we had to actually create the server instead of just calling listen and serve TLS because we needed to hold multiple domains. And so we had to use this T configuration. And we could assign it a handler too. So then when we ran this server dot listen and serve TLS, we sent it blank strings because it was using the, the T configuration to run that. Again, these have log fatal. And then if we look at the handlers, all we needed to do for this was just to split the host, take everything after the colon and get rid of it. Um, and then make sure we sent it to HTTPS. It gave it the new port that it was supposed to go to. And then we kept the path from the URL. And that was redirected using a number 302. Finally, we called for our secure handler. We just handled it the same way as we'd handle any serve work. Just here's the stuff. I'm just going to do the things that I want this website to do here. But here it is it's securely behind HTTPS. So hope that all makes sense to you. If you've liked it, do hit the like button if you've subscribed. If you've not yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I am Matt Studley from storyfeed.com and you have just watched a video.